Okay, welcome back again to another Wargame Red Dragon replay. It's going to be one versus one on the map, uh, standoff in Barents, I think. And uh, yeah, we'll just switch over to the game itself, actually. That might be a good idea. So I believe it's. Uh... Shit, which one is it again? Ah, it's this one here. Perfect. Hopefully you can see everything just fine and dandy. So we've got bottom versus top. Well, actually, no, that's north there, so north versus south there. We've got um, Lightman and myself playing as Nietzsche. And in the south... Actually, there we go, that's better. In the south, we've got my opponent, uh, Donetsk Donbass, playing as uh, Pact. And uh, yeah, this should be an inter interesting match, actually. Um, I believe I'll be uh, basically emphasizing the uh, strengths of NATO Naval, which is basically... Um, Air power, although the ships aren't too bad, but uh, generally NATO has better aircraft for naval stuff and um, at certain things anyway. Impact has generally got um, better ships. Well, I, I'm not really sure if saying better is actually a best way to put it because um, Pact, they do actually have some pretty good aircraft, but um, they just. Yeah, it's just that NATO has got good aircraft as well and they've got really good ones um, versus ships, so. Well, whatever. One's generally got better stuff than the other. Ge well, one's got better naval, the other one's got better ships. I think we'll just leave it at that. We'll speed things up a bit. Apparently this goes for 30 minutes. Oh, actually, I think I might just be counting down from that. Maybe 30 minutes and 5 seconds, apparently. Well, in any case, the game is afoot. And there you have it. So we'll just uh, go back to normal speed. <coughs> so what are we starting off with? I've got one pan for coming in with his ASMs off, so he's just basically there to um, recon a single Congo and a Type 21 just going to be chilling at uh, Charlie, so presumably the other points I've uh, spent on my aircraft or not, I don't know, oh yeah there you go, f trip one gs and the Tornado MFG, a very nice ASM craft indeed opponents on the other hand has got Lourdes Najins, and Najins kind of like cheap um, ships of the line for lack of a better word, Tranchals are uh, what are they again? I think they're like long-range ASM ships, yep. Glass cannons with barely any strengths. Ah, here we go. Any strength, should I say, not strengths. And there you have it, so you got the first kill, and I think these guys managed to make it out of there. Very nicely done indeed. So, yeah, basically, yeah, I'll be doing hit-and-run attacks with uh, aircraft. And apparently, Donetsk has abandoned his uh, initial uh, spawn point for some reason. Interesting, because maybe he's going to hotel. He shouldn't have abandoned in any case. Because one thing I've noticed is that um, if you or your team do not have a, uh, a reinforcement zone captured at all, then that's reinforcement zone now. Well, that basically means that you won't even get any more uh, deployment points. And of course, you won't be able to deploy stuff either. But that basically means your income stops entirely, from what I can tell. Because it just I can't see it at the top left now. But it, yeah, I'm pretty sure it stays. Um, yeah, it stays frozen until you get get a reinforcement zone back. Actually, can you actually see income? No, you can't. Well, that kind of sucks. Oh, well, oh, actually, we'll, 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 get, we'll go to what everyone can see. So, I've got my pan for here, and I can see, um, yeah, essentially everything. I can even, even see the Luda all, all the way out there. Wow, that is impressive range indeed. Tranchal's getting revealed as well. Donetsk, on the other hand, he can see nothing. <laughs> sucks to be him. Actually, the Tranchal's, do they have... Good AA. Nope, they just got Strela Twems, which are basically the infantry mounted ones. And they can't even target um, ASMs of those missiles, which is just ridiculous. In fact, their kills is good. Their um, innate kills, I believe, is good, but that, I, I believe um, that innate kills, it can't target missiles that are going to other ships. I think that's how it works. And then these main weapons that you see there. The AK-176 Mosquit and the Strela, they're like the main weapons that, um, and if one of them says death, then that can target the um, missiles targeted other ships. But anyway, we've got more missiles coming in from myself, and look at that, Lure has been taken out. I think I actually weakened it before, not 100% sure, but in any case, there we go. That, this is exactly how NATO should be played, as far as I understand it anyway, for um, naval, basically going with these hit and run attacks, trying to avoid direct engagements. Um, against their ships with my ships, and of course the way that Pact should be handling this, in general of course there are exceptions, are, um, they, oh wait a minute, they should be stopping the ships, there we go, they should be basically um, forcing uh, fleet engagements with uh, 
with NATO basically. They should be sending in their naval, uh, their naval ships, naval ships, their, their naval units in force basically, uh, yeah, to force a confrontation against NATO. Um, and NATO would usually, yeah, just, you, yeah, usually just try to hide their ships or uh, just try to engage it only in the most favourable circumstances. More missiles incoming to take out the Najin, maybe I think so. Unfortunately, yeah, that was um, wasn't that great. I could have, I think I um, mistargeted the t Tornado MFG's missiles, which kind of sucks. SU 27K coming in. Yeah, this is actually one of the very nice packed planes. We'll just uh, see if I can zoom in on it. Oh, he's actually going to be launching one single ASM. That's a problem with him. He only has one ASM. He's very good against enemy aircraft though. I believe the uh, Vimpels are fine and forget. Now I can't actually check that out. And the uh, single ASM that he gets, um, if it actually hits, it does crap loads of damage. Of course, getting it to actually hit is another matter altogether. Comars are going to be coming in for Donbass and they are going to be a bit of a pain in the ass with their uh, ASMs, these are the river ones I believe, yep, so they can't be targeted with ASMs themselves, which kind of sucks, they're going to uh, sail on, my Panther can't target them, he can see them at the very least, the Comars on the other hand, yeah, they only have two ASMs and one main gun with really shitty anti-ground range, not so bad anti-air um, range, oh, actually, Muna, is he going to die? Yes, a very juicy target indeed, a nice little target of opportunity, and he's barely going to get out of there, then Yunushka barely taking shots at him. I believe that's the AA ship basically. Uh, actually decent um, ASMs and the main gun is kind of crappy but health is not that great either. But um, yeah basically this is your um, primary uh, air defense ship apart from the um, flagships anyway. Yeah this is your primary air defense ship for a pact. Very nice indeed. Not too shabby range against aircraft. And helicopters although I think Seed could technically hit these guys actually because they do use radar guided missiles. You don't have to worry about that in naval games only because you don't get any Seed aircraft. But still, it's something to um, to note though. Although I'm not really sure how yeah, given the range against their planes, yeah, I don't know how effective Seed will actually be against them, especially since they can take quite a few hits. But anyway, got some more planes coming in, and again, I don't know what exactly this um, Donbass guy is doing. He's separating his forces. He's not trying to attack me at all, he's being very passive, which is something you don't want to be doing as packed. Um, I mean, I can, you can afford to do it as NATO because your own planes are so damn good they can basically uh, pick off the enemy's forces like this, as you can see, but uh, yeah, as packed, you can't really afford to do that. Unless if you want to try to, I don't, I don't know, maybe play like NATO and uh, send off your planes against the uh, enemy ships, that'll be a bit trickier to pull off though. It won't be as cost effective. Um, as when NATO tries it at the very least. Yeah, if you just try to yeah, yeah, do what I'm doing as NATO, which is just yeah, sending planes off against them. But, uh, huh. Interesting, very interesting indeed. Comars will be a bit of a pain in the ass against these f Triple one gs Yeah, they take a few pod shots, not too bad, but eh, whatever. I take him out nonetheless. He actually has more score points than I do. <laughs> because um, I haven't actually, there we go, I haven't actually separated my ships. I should have done that at the beginning actually. I don't know what the hell I was thinking, not sending in either the Time 21 here or Congo there or somewhere else. It doesn't really matter, but in any case, I had two ships at the beginning. And uh, yeah, definitely had an opportunity to actually send them both to two separate spots. But anyway, two se uh, SU 27K is coming in. Uh, Vimpels are fine for gets and they do get one ASM, but it's very powerful that I didn't actually get to see uh, how much damage it does. Uh, damn it, I didn't... <sighs> well, you can pause the video, I suppose, and um, check it out there, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I uh, didn't get to see it myself, though. and ouch, now we're going to get attacked by ASMs. Finally, he's forcing an engagement. Certainly took his time. The Congo basically needs to retreat, he's getting panicked. Yeah, he needs to get the hell out of Dodge, basically. He is uh, getting the odd missile hitting him. He actually might get destroyed. This is going to be a bit of a disaster if he actually gets destroyed. Panther also getting targeted by the Comars. Congo is... Yeah. Slowly getting out of there. The Tram Intruder, at the very least, does manage to take out one of the Tranchals, I believe. But they've already used up all the ASMs anyway. Thankfully, the Congo's still alive. I think my one of my planes did get shot down. Probably not... Kind of missed that. Panther's probably going to get shot down though. Comars, yeah, actually, what is their range there? So yeah, they got no kills at all. Um, yeah, actually, helicopter and airplanes range is not too shabby, really. As you can see, uh, accuracy could be a bit better. But they did eventually take out the helicopter. Their ground range, range is absolutely uh, atrocious, though. So NATO, they actually do have a uh, hard counter to the Comar. And it's an ATGM. Oh, this thing's just going to be flying... Um, 
Wow, talk about a dramatic flying away crash there. Bam. But anyway, yeah, NATO's got a bit of a hard counter to the coma at the very least. Um, they got a, a river ship that can't be targeted by SMs, and it comes with ATGMs, so you can target everything, well, every uh, sort of vehicle anyway. These comas, yeah, the strength is still pretty high against ATGMs, but um, yeah, still, you can basically, I um, can't remember what it was called though. But yeah, you can basically target them with the ATGM gunboats, and uh, yeah, the coma essentially can't shoot back unless if it gets into, well, 8 to 75 meters range, point blank range basically. That's the range of um, of infantry, essentially. So, there you go. Now, the Panther coming in just to spots. I got plus two points coming in, which hopefully should be alright. Do I actually have a. Actually, probably should be paying attention to what these planes are doing, but um, yeah, I don't think I've actually sent in any, anything to resupply the Congo or to repair him. Usually, it's not very supply is uh, efficient to do so because I've just got so many hit points, but whatever. In any case, they're trying to nibble away at the uh, packed navy. A bit of overkill on the missiles. It gets the job done though, and no aircraft being shot down. SU-27K trying to come in to do a bit of damage, but uh, nope. Thankfully being a little bit too late. And yeah, it is actually a very decent multi-roll. Great ECM, great turn radius, great speed. Its ASM is really shitty, but um, yeah. And of course it doesn't get any um, infrared missiles versus helicopters, which kind of sucks, but... Uh, yeah, what the hell, it's still... Oh yeah, that's right. Anyway, it still um, is a very good multi-roll, actually. Well, mostly just an anti-air craft, to be honest. Uh, yeah, packed, unfortunately. They don't get as many planes, good planes, with uh, four ASMs each, like NATO does. And I think I was trying to go after the nudge in there. Didn't quite work out. This guy actually might get taken out. He still escapes. If Donbass had two SU-27Ks, I think he might have taken him out. Otherwise, nope. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to take out the Najin. I think it would have been better off just going, just going against the Nuna, actually. It's got its side exposed. How much damage can it take? 100. Okay, it can take a bit of damage, but I think, uh, given all these other ships can provide um, defense. Actually, maybe the uh, innate defense there, the kills at the bottom there, maybe it actually can target missiles that are aimed at other ships if they get close enough. Not 100% sure, to be honest. And I've played this game a few times. Hmm. Yeah, probably should know that by now. Actually, I might just take a note of that. So, Najin, okay, it uh, doesn't have any main defensive uh, weapons. Nanyushka's got the defensive missiles. Uh, Tranchil's got no main defensive weapons. More Nanyushka's coming in, okay. Yeah, I'm surprised he doesn't actually have an uh, Udaloi or a Sovremnia craft. Craft. <laughs> um, craft. Yeah, interesting. It actually doesn't have anything like that out on the field. It's just got Nanyushkas and Tranchils and Nudgeons and such. I mean also they're pretty nice craft but um, yeah those flagships, in particular the one with 300 hit points, I can't remember which one it is, I think it's the one that I've got in my inventory actually, but anyway yeah the ones with 300 hit points, or the single one with 300 hit points anyway, um, yeah they're yeah they're pretty solid hitters as long as you don't let them get overrun by uh, ASM planes. But of course, that's what uh, this stuff is for. These Nanyushkas. Are they Nanyushkas I'm thinking of? Yeah, they're the ones with the uh, great range. This is planes. The flagships have got even better range, actually, which makes it even more surprising that... Um, yeah, they look at that. The Nanyushkas can return fire, as you can see, versus the uh, ships. I think, yeah, one of them got shot down, though. The other one might die... Let's see here. Yeah, damn it, I wanted to zoom in on him. He makes it out of there, but yeah, one of my planes does get uh, shot down there, which kind of sucks, so... Ouch. But the Nanyushkas, as you can see, yep, they can return fire against uh, ASM planes. Thank God for that, otherwise they'd be kind of useless. <laughs> or rather, should I say, they've got the range um, to return missiles against those airplanes. So yeah, I suppose, I'd, I mean, really, yeah, they're nice to have all this stuff, but really, the longest ranged AA that you're going to get on a packed ship is uh, basically going to be on their flagships. Um, one of them, I believe, has got 4,000, uh, maybe uh, 4,200 meters range or something like that, and I think the other's got 4,500 meters range, something like that. Over 4,000 in either case. Huh. Yeah, but yeah, definitely way over 4,000. At least 4,500 for the uh, better ranged one, which I can't remember what it is. But uh, there you have it. In any case, two Komaras coming in to uh, harass my stuff. This is not how you use Comars. They're, um, I mean, they're ASMs, granted, they do have pretty uh, pathetic range. 
but um, they should be used at max range though. The way he's sending them out like this, they're basically going to come straight into gun range of uh, all my ships basically, and uh, yeah, we'll basically find out what happens. What else do we have? Pan for coming in, Koma, yeah, actually, I think I'll just uh, focus on what's happening here. We'll just hide the HUD. One of the great things about watching a replay is being able to um, yeah, zoom in like this. Let's try to track them for fuck's sake. There we go. There we go, and yeah, as you can see, they're going to go straight into uh, gun cannon range. They're still going to launch their missiles, but yeah, there's too few missiles being launched to really be able to do anything. I believe this one just got taken out. We'll zoom in on this one, and yeah, it should get taken out pretty... Uh, let's just do this thing. Yeah, oh, damn it, I was tracking him. Oh, he's going to die anyway. There we go. Dies a dramatic heroic death, I suppose. So, there you go. <laughs> oh, indeed. Let's just zoom out, and uh, yeah, there you have it. Definitely dominating quite a bit. Uh, I've got slightly more score points than my opponent. Could try to expand a bit, actually, if I capture, say, Golf, or even just Echo, actually. Just so I can get slightly more uh, income than my opponent. That'd be nice. And yeah, just continuing to whittle him down. I'm actually starting to get um, ships coming in now. So I think I've actually exhausted all of my plane cards by the sounds of it. Now I'm just ordering in ships. So there you have it. My um, ships have basically just been standing around, not doing too much. But uh, still a bit of an action packed game. If only because of the fact that my um, planes have been dealing the blows for me. Oh, this is a bit of a bad idea actually, flying straight over the Comars. We have a single plane as well, so everything's going to be focusing firing on it, although... Uh, did I actually... I fired one single missile, that was interesting, and he barely managed to evac though. Interesting. Yeah, two SU-27Ks, so he's definitely going to be able to defend against my um, planes now, unless if I bring in my own... Uh, anti-air uh, multi-roll planes, we'll see what happens. Unfortunately I can't target his Komar still. Yeah, I'm surprised he's still just sitting back, not doing anything. He sh why isn't he attacking? He might be a bit too late now actually to do so. Although if he sends all this stuff in at once... Hmm. Yeah, sends in the Komars along with the... Uh, or even just the Komars on their own actually, as long as they don't get too freaking close to the guns. Actually I believe... Um, so they have like 5,000 something range on the uh, missiles. Uh, what are the guns like? How does the Perry 3150 Type 21? Ah, that's right, that's one really good gun range. Uh, I think it's only the Congo that outranges their ASMs, at least from the ships that I've got here. Yeah, these guys got a pretty decent range though. Congo's got 6,125 meters. 6,000 meters basically. Coma's got 5,250 meters. So, yeah, they, uh, that's the only gun. Probably in the entire NATO fleet that actually outranges the uh, Komars or ASMs. So you just have to watch out for that. But really, these Komars, they're just meant for um, a quick hit and run attack anyway. So I think, uh, yeah, Donetsk is basically just assembling them, ready to go in for a bit of a uh, hit and run assault. Although you might actually make something happen with these uh, ships. We'll see what happens. Tr more Tranchals and Anushka's coming in. Uh, just having a look, actually. He's not. Uh, He's not turning off any of his ASMs though, which is going to be a bit of a problem, because that means they're probably not all going to fire off at the same time. We'll see what happens though. I mean, he's got him in a line and all that, so he might not need to do that um, weapon on and off micro, as it were. God, these guys are going to suffer horribly. Um, yeah, he might not actually need to do that if he's got him in a line anyway and they all get into range at the same time. Although actually, no, the Komars, yeah, because they'll have short range ASMs, something just went down there, not really sure what's. Probably one of my own planes, but anyway. Uh, yeah, looks like it, I think. Probably an F, no, not, not an F-Trip-1G, uh, F-Trip-1-something. I think it was an MFG. What was I going to say? Damn it. Oh yeah, that's right, the Komars um, have got way shorter range on their... Uh, is ASMs though, so it's going to be a bit tricky to time it anyway. Um, it's better just to turn off the ASMs and then just turn them all on at the same time. In either case, I'm actually still retreating, funnily enough. I probably could have taken them on, to be honest, but um, yeah, instead I'm just retreating to uh, greener pastures. Why not? I mean, I do have Echo now as well as a reinforcement zone, and it uh, looks like I'm retreating them all here, actually, rather than going here. Hmm, okay. Well, what the hell, I mean, I've still got more score points than him, but only just, though, only just, it looks like this guy's going to go straight to Mike, maybe. He's going to be a bit vulnerable on his own, but uh, what the hell, looks like I'm just going to uh, 
take a bit of a risk. Yeah, I think my navy is starting to look alright. I think I was just a bit afraid of getting assaulted by all of these ships at the same time, so just retreating and hoping that they would follow me, and then maybe I could pick them off in dribs and drabs as they come across, or rather come around from here. I'm not really sure about my thought process at the time. But uh, there you go, that's the current situation. Uh, still uh, even all around. I think he might be sending in a Jing... Jenghu free to capture Alpha. Yep, looks like he is. Plenty of Komas, probably a little bit too uh, separated, really. I mean, this one's not going to do too much on its own, but anyway. Yeah, there you go. An interesting game nonetheless. So there we go. Plus two finally coming in, but it's going to be negated by the Jenghu. Jenghu free coming in. A bit tongue tied there for some reason. Anyway, let's just zoom. Actually, no, wait a minute. Was there something I missed? No, it's got nothing really heading on to the other points. So. Yeah, okay, we should be good to go. So yeah, that's quite the game indeed. I think I'll fast forward a bit actually, because uh, not much is happening. I think my planes have mostly been uh, depleted. I can, of course, just as I say that. Uh, damn it, what did they even shoot at? I've got no idea. Presumably whatever this was. Maybe, uh, was it a Yanushka? Probably. Another Yanushka coming in at the very least. Bit of a choke point. Apparently they can go through here. Oh, wait a minute, because they're coasters. Yeah, that's right, they can go through there. Uh, they actually... oh no, they do have a... Um, what is this? Uh, what the hell is that actually? What's the... Ah! Oh. Ah, oh, okay, Delinsky... I... How could I not notice that? It's the... Silverstone... Okay, they've actually got um, different names on the left there. Bausto, Goddard, Gabriel. How the hell could I not notice that? Saiyan... Do okay. I don't know how the hell I've never noticed that before. Sopionov. Yeah, interesting. Okay. Well, okay. So yeah, there we go. And now they're actually engaging me in dribs and drabs. Nyushka and Tranchal on their own. Komar's not really doing too much. Actually, just destroying the Panther. Sucks to be him. And ASMs are not hitting me. Thank God for that. Barely, actually, but um, still not hitting me though, and that's what counts. He's going to be resupplying himself, but yeah, as you can see, he's way too spaced out. And the Jankus, how much do they cost? 160, and yeah, pretty good um, guns range, actually. But the thing is, though, these guys are 160, so compared to the Najin, which is 120, yeah, they're... Hmm. I hope I didn't just stop the recording there, damn it. Actually, no, I think it's the numkey I'm supposed to hit rather than the uh, regular number key. But yeah, these ships are way too expensive just, just to use as uh, cheap capping ships. These Komas should be here, these Komas should be... Well, actually, maybe not here, this is a bit of a choke point. But still, he's attacking in dribs and drabs, which is exactly what I was hoping for. And uh, yeah, he's basically getting taken out as a result. Nicely done, mate, if I do say so. But really, he should not have been attacking in dribs and drabs like that. And now I believe I should just be able to engage in a direct fleet versus fleet action, actually, by the looks of things. We'll see what happens, though. Just fast forward. Kind of wish these things had some sort of um, movement sounds. They sound eerily silent, just moving uh, forward silently, but oh well. I'm trying to fast forward as much as possible while. Uh, you know, not missing on, on, out in the action sequences, to say the least. Well, actually, Type 29, uh, sorry, Type 21 is in a bit of trouble. I think he managed to hide himself away behind the hilly bit, so he should be alright. And again, these Komas coming in with the ASMs, but uh, not being able to do too much. N you need them in numbers, basically, to really do anything. And they need to fire all at the same time, literally all at the same time, to do anything. And you have to stop sending them forward. He kept sending them forward after they fired the ASMs. And yeah, they just went further into um, into gun range as a result. Actually, when it comes to guns and all that, uh, I believe... Uh, just having a quick look through... Huh, yeah, that's a bizarre, actually. Actually, it's not that bizarre, I suppose. Oh, actually, no, these guys have got di different stabilizer values compared to the regular accuracy. Yeah, but the main guns, overall, seem to have... Oh, no, no, wait a minute. So the Lafayette has got... Um... Oh, no, no, it's... One is blue, the other is orange, yes. The stabilizers. stabilizer is still uh, the same as the regular accuracy. So, yeah, it's rather interesting how the um, vast majority of the, uh, of the naval guns are not actually... Uh, yeah, not actually different in terms of uh, regular accuracy and the uh, far and the move accuracy. 40% there, 40% there. They just have slightly different bars for some reason. Yeah, it's very strange, actually. I mean, granted, they'd be using mostly fancy fire control systems anyway for their... Um, 
main guns and such, and I suppose for the missiles as well actually, yeah, accuracy 55 and stabilizer 55 as well. Still though, you'd think even then they'd be slightly more accurate at the very least if they were um, not moving. I mean, because when they're moving they're, you know, bobbing up and down in the waves a tiny bit I suppose, maybe not that much, but still probably enough to make a difference at um, super long ranges. And, uh, what are they doing? Oh! They're firing their uh, ASMs into a bit of a kills gauntlet, as you can see. Yes. Apparently that Jiankui I'm pretty sure was using his kills, his internal kills, but, oh no, never mind, his main gun is also defensive as well. I'll be damned. Interesting. Well, in any case, that was a bit of a uh, mismanagement by my ASMs there. Very bad idea launching them into a bit of a corridor like that when they can just be targeted by uh, kills in transit rather than uh, having them targeted it head on. But, uh, oh well, what can you do? But yeah, rather bizarre. Yeah, you'd think they would be slightly more uh, inaccurate at uh, when they're moving compared to uh, when they're stationary. Okay, maybe the missiles. Maybe not them, but... Yeah, I don't know. Seems very strange to me, but... Well... I suppose maybe the guns are just that well stabilised or something. Who knows? Who knows? I think we've talked about stabilisation for long enough. This Komar is not really doing too much, and yeah, my fleet is just ridiculous now. Don't really need these planes at all, but... Uh, yeah, what the hell, I'll still try to use them anyway. I might be able to take out some of their um, Munas, actually. That'd be very good if I can take these out, because these things, well, not only do you destroy their supplies, but um, they explode rather violently as well, and since some ships tend to stay right around them to, um, to actually resupply, then they tend to do a bit of damage, um, collateral damage to them. Unfortunately, though, Janku doing a great job defending there. Good job, Janku. I think something else got taken out, though. Look, yep, looks like a Komar slowly sinking in th into the uh, briny depths there. Down he goes, very nicely done indeed. But uh, yeah, this game is pretty much a foregone conclusion. The score points were relatively close actually, given what's happened. But I think, well I could have been a bit more aggressive with my own ships actually, but uh, there you go. And I think he actually surrendered there, so still an interesting game nonetheless. Got a bit of chat happening there, which I might commentate on next, we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, interesting game. Yeah, Standoff in Brents was the map, and I shall see you all next time, hopefully.